One of these ladies is the only woman in history to sail across the Atlantic Ocean alone. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Davison. My name is Anne Davison. My name is Anne Davison. Only one of these ladies is the real Anne Davison. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, star of the Broadway hit musical Milk and Honey, Mimi Benzel, Johnny Carson, and Peggy Cass. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Tristan Decongestant Tablet, the three-layer tablet for fast, really effective relief from colds, miseries, and pollen allergies. Good evening, panel. Hello, Bud. Hello. Mimi, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to our show tonight. Thank you very much, Bud. I hope I can tell the truth. <laughs> well, even if you don't, you'll have fun trying, I'm sure. <laughs> panel, would you kindly open up your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read. I, Anne Davison, am an author and a sailor. My latest trip was a 6,000-mile solo voyage around the eastern half of the United States in a 17-foot outboard motorboat. I went from Miami up the inland waterway to New Jersey, then up the Hudson River through the canals to the Great Lakes. From there, I sailed down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico and thence back to Miami. The trip took six months and is the subject of my recently published book, In the Wake of the Gemini. My first book, called My Ship is So Small, is the story of my solo trip from Europe to America in a 23-foot sailboat. I am the only woman in history to ever sail across the Atlantic Ocean alone. Signed, Ann Davison. Quite comfortable, ladies? Yes, Very well, here we have three intrepid explorer-type ladies. I think you'll admit have had all the daring. Each one claiming to be Ann Davison, who sailed across the Atlantic Ocean all alone. And we'll begin this round with our own sailor extraordinary, Peggy Cass. Uh, number three, what is the difference between a catch and a sloop? Um, catch has two masts. The sloop, one. Thank you. Number two, uh, how many sails does a schooner carry? Let's see, this main, this the main sail, the four sail, and a jib. There are three. Thank you. Number one, uh, what is the Gemini named for? The Gemini is named for the heavenly twins. I named it that because my boat had two engines. I see. Uh, number one, uh, what is a yawl? It's a southern expression. Yeah, <laughs> I can feel that one coming. <laughs> oh, answer. No answer. No, they got steeped in the south there on that one. Tom. I can't wait till Johnny starts with the uh, nun boys and uh, the oh, boxing the compass. <laughs> You're going to give up on that tonight, John? <laughs> number one, do you, who is Colin Fox? I do not know. Do you happen to know number two? No, I don't. Number three, do you happen to know who Colin Fox is? Uh, he, um, he did some sailing. He's, he's with sailing? Well, the question is very germane to your particular achievement, ladies. I'll, I'll say that for... Uh, tell me, where did you sail? What was your origin when you started your cross the ocean trip, number three? From did, England. Where? Plymouth. And where did you land, number three? Um, how do you mean? Where did you, uh, where did you uh, first uh, come to, what, what, at what point did you come to the United States, or was it the United States? Came to the United States. Where did you, where did you dock first? Miami. Oh, my Mimi goodness. Benzel. Uh, number one, when you took the trip from um, up the Hudson River through the canals to the Great Lakes, what was the first lake you entered? The first lake in the Great Lakes? Yes. Ontario. Uh, number two, how much horsepower did your two engines have? 
35 each. 35 each, yes. Uh, number three, <clears throat> how did you sleep? How, how did I sleep? <laughs> yes. Well, on, you... on the boat. I mean, how did you sleep? Did you... Um, you mean on the voyage when port? she was all alone? <clears throat> yes, when you were alone. Oh. Well, um, just slept. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I mean, who was guarding the ship while you were sleeping? Well, I would heave to it every night and sleep. One does when they're on a rough ocean. Uh, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I did so lousy last week with that other, the fellow in the Navy. I'm even afraid to take something here. Uh, number one, uh, if you're on a collision course dead ahead with another boat, what action do you take? Get out of the way. <laughs> well, let me rephrase that. Uh, would you go to port or starboard? Port. All right. Uh, number two, I'll try this one again. What's a sea anchor? A sea anchor is an anchor that, that you drop when, you're, when you are actually at sea and it drags to keep you on course. That's all we have time for, I'm sorry to say, because the questions are just really getting interesting and keen, and so let's spend all that energy now in marking our ballots, if you will, please. Without consultation, will you vote now for number one, number two, or number three? Of course, our team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Are we set? All ballots marked? Johnny, have you voted yet? Yes, I All have. Set? Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. Uh, <coughs> She, she seemed to have the poise and equanimity of, of a lady who might be able to do this rather adventurous thing. And uh, I would be very uh, surprised and pleased to hear that the first woman who sailed the Atlantic alone went from England to Miami. I think it would be a real long way to go, but... Uh, Mimi. Well, I voted for number two also. Uh, because there are very few women that know such mundane facts, and here I'm going to get murdered, as uh, what horsepower is in an engine. But number two answered very quickly. She told me 35 horsepower in each engine. Of course, I have no idea whether engines have 35 horsepower <laughs> or not. <laughs> but I voted for number two on that basis. Okay, fine. Johnny, what about uh, your I'm going to go along with the group. I voted for number two. <laughs> number one, you do try to get out of the way, but... Uh, you <laughs> You, you should go to starboard uh, on something like that. And number two knew the sea anchor, so here we go again, friends. Peggy. Oh, I voted for number three. A solo flight. Well, well, the thing is, she seemed so astounded by every question that I figured she, she figured we were boobs and that she really knew. <laughs> unveiling right away. The votes are in, the minds are made up, so let's not waste any more time in getting at the truth in this matter and finding out which one of these ladies is the real one who sailed across the Atlantic Ocean alone. So will the real Ann Davison please stand up. And a good start, I must say, uh, challenges. You did well there. You almost 100% deceived our expert panel. Let's find out about you other two skillful uh, deceivers. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Eileen Palmer. I'm from Westport, Connecticut. I am a housewife. And number two, you garnered most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Betty Vautier, and I work with the National Council of Churches. Passed the plate well and picked up a nice offering because it was three incorrect votes at $250 each. It's a grand total of $750 for you ladies to uh, discuss among yourselves and sort of parlay around. And of course, you also received from Dristan a gift package of all the fine products made by Dristan. And we thank you so much for being with us. Happy sailing to you all, and God bless you. Now, panel, let me introduce our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name, Claude Terrai. My name is Claude Terrai. My name is Claude Terrai. Follow along again, panel, if you will, with your copies of this affidavit. 
I, Claude Terrail, am the owner and manager of the famous Tour d'Argent, the oldest restaurant in Paris. Tour d'Argent is famous for its wine cellar, its magnificent view of Notre Dame Cathedral, its gastronomic museum, and the fact that a fork was used there for the first time in history. The specialty of the house is pressed duck. Since 1890, each duck served has been numbered. J.P. Morgan ate duck 71,676. Queen Elizabeth was served number 185,937. And duck 259066 was enjoyed by Harry Truman. The Tour d'Argent served its first meal in the year 1582. It has been in continuous operation for 380 years. Signed, Claude Terrail. Now, panel, you heard as I did. These gentlemen all claiming to be Claude Terrail, owner of the Tour d'Argent restaurant. And we'll start this cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, I hate to do this, but unless I'm very much mistaken, I had the uh, privilege of meeting Monsieur Terrail uh, fairly recently. It was a brief meeting, but I was so impressed by the fact that he owned this magnificent restaurant that I, I remembered well enough to have to disqualify myself, I'm sorry to say. Oh, too bad, Tom. All right. Me, me, then you will start. Well, I'm terribly sorry. I've never eaten in Tour d'Argent. But I'm going to try and see who runs the place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, number one, you say in your affidavit that the first fork was used at the Tour d'Argent. Would you tell me how many prongs in that fork? How many? How many prongs in the first fork? Prongs, the little spear points. You know, how many of them were there in the first fork? Two, three, four? In the, in the very first one. In the fork, in the fork itself, the first fork. Pouchette, is that a fork? <laughs> two. 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 Uh, number two, what was the fork made of? Silver. Um, number three, if I were to start at the Place Blanche and walk to the top of the Montmartre, I would come upon a scene that is very famous in a painting. Would you tell me what that is? I am sorry I didn't get the question. <laughs> I don't know if I could repeat it. <laughs> I'm too tired to take that walk again. We have to travel over to Johnny now anyway. Johnny, do you care to take a walk? I'll, I'll try, yes. <laughs> uh, number two, are you familiar with an item that was in the paper today about a, a plane that went through the sound barrier in a region of France and broke 4,000 bottles of wine in a, in a restaurant, in a wine cellar? Hmm. It was in the no. paper today. Oh. No, I, no. I, I, I'm very sorry. <laughs> well, so am I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, number three, what is the name of the organization in, in, in Paris or France that rates restaurants? They give them a rating by a certain number of stars or... Oh, yes, yes. Deep what guide Michelin. Uh, what is the greatest number of, of stars that a restaurant can have? Three stars. Thank you. Peggy. Number two, what is Brandad? Brandad, uh, Brandad is... Uh, uh, Brandad Moru is codfish, which is... Uh, uh, hashed up with olive oil and with uh, various things, parsley. Uh, number three, um, what is a hot piece of bone? It's a wine of burgundy. I see. And uh, number one, what is a bateau mouche? You mind your language. <laughs> a bateau mouche. A bateau mouche is a little board who on the same, usually they spend on every weekend and every just to see Paris, sightseeing. Thank you. I am sorry to say that's all we have time for. This could have been a very fascinating, a lot of information we might have achieved, but if we didn't, let's work with what we have and mark our ballots. Will you do so now, please, without further questioning and without consultation? And vote as you do for number one, number two, or number three. Are we all marked? Okay. Tom, whom did you select this time? Well, uh, I disqualified myself. Oh, that's right. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I'm you sorry, to, Tom. I, I could be mistaken. I hate to leave you out of it. That'll count as, a, as a, an incorrect vote when we total up the entire thing. Mimi, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one because he told me that the first fork had two prongs, which I believe is correct. Number two said the first fork was made of silver. I'm not sure. I thought it was made of wood. And number three, if you walk from Place Blanche to the top of Montmartre, you come upon the very famous scene that Utrillo painted, and I thought all Frenchmen should know that. Okay, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for number one for the same reasons. 
<laughs> All right. Peggy, which one did you select? I didn't. I voted for number three. Because he knew about the horse beast of bone, and also if Tom was impressed by him at the party, he's very good looking. I'm impressed by him here. So <laughs> Fair enough. Both in, minds made up. Let's get to it right away without any further uh, hedging off from our own particular denouement and find out which one of these three gentlemen is really the owner of the famous Tour d'Argent restaurant in Paris. So will the real Claude Terrai please stand up? How do you happen to be in this? You may sit down, sir, if you will. How do you happen to be in this country? Have a seat. Well, indeed. <laughs> well, I was asked by the Gourmet Society for the Legion of Art to supervise a dinner at the Gotham Hotel for 150 people, and I brought my chef with me. Oh, that should be some dinner. I like it. Yeah, we invited. Certainly. Well. Let's find out about the other two now. Number one, you got two of the votes. Uh, what is your real name and what do you really do, sir? My name is Edmond Sousa. I am born in Cairo, Egypt, and I'm a portrait painter. Portrait painter. Thank you, sir. Very nice to have you with us. Number two, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Richard de Rochemont, and I was born in Boston, and I'm a motion picture producer. motion picture producer with a phony accent you pulled on us there and very well done too well it was fun and we got one more incorrect yes no, i just wanted to ask monsieur number three would you take a walk up the moment with me and i'll show you where utrillo painted the picture oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is a painting but i would love to go with you <laughs> i don't blame you all right we have uh checking the score we had only one correct that means two incorrect plus uh, Tom's disqualification making three incorrect votes at $250 each. So in the first round, the same as the second round, $750, gentlemen, and I hope you had fun. Uh, of course, from Dristan, you also receive a gift package of their fine products, and we thank you for being with us. Good night. <laughs> and now may I introduce our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jim Cook. My name is Jim Cook. My name is Jim Cook. Again, follow along with your copies of this affidavit panel, if you please. I, Jim Cook, am a tornado hunter. I fly a converted B-26 bomber in research flights for the United States Weather Bureau. During the tornado season, I fly almost daily missions, tracking down and reporting on the deadly twisters. By learning more about these storms and their origins, we may someday be able to take measures to prevent them. At least we hope to be able to improve our tornado forecasting methods. If we can give sufficient advance warning to those areas in danger, we can save many of the 1,500 people who each year are killed or injured by these most treacherous of all windstorms. Signed, Jim Cook. We just heard these three stalwart gentlemen, each claiming to be Jim Cook, Tornado Hunter. Let's begin this round with Mimi Benza. Mimi? Uh, contestant number one, would you tell me where the chief weather bureau forecasting, forecasting station is in the United States? Washington, D.C. Number two, what kind of clouds do you look for when you are tracking a tornado? We normally look for a storm cloud, more commonly known as a cumulonimbus. Number three, is it true that a tornado loses its punch, as it were, over water? Yes, uh, however, it's usually a water spout when over water. Johnny. Uh, number two, uh, in every degree of latitude, how many minutes is that? One minute. Actually, 60 minutes per degree. One, uh, one degree of, one second of latitude is one mile. All right, number one, uh, would you answer the same question? Uh, one, one minute, one degree, that's right. Uh, number three, what's an isobar? A line at every point on it has equal pressure. Number two, uh, what is LORAN, L-O-R-A-N? LORAN is a abbreviation for long-range navigation. Thank you. Peggy. Flight. 
Uh, number three, uh, there was a recent uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do they call tornado? it? Tornado. A recent tornado in uh, Florida. What part of Florida was that in? In the north central part. Uh, uh, number two, uh, which city was done the most damage to by that recent uh, Florida tornado? Well, as a matter of fact, there's only one city hit by it, and it was Milton, Florida. Thank you. Number one, what is the difference between a cyclone and a tornado? A cyclone is any movement of air uh, traveling in a counterclockwise uh, movement. Uh -huh. And uh, a tornado is a, a spout, uh, uh, a spout uh, coming out of the bottom of a cumulonimbus. Oh, I want to see. Mm -hmm. Tom. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, bud. <laughs> number, dear old number three, uh, what are those six knobs on the throttle quadrant? The two uh, throttle controls, the two prop controls, and uh, two carburetor air controls. Uh, thank you. Number two, uh, where are the manifold pressure controls? They're on the pedestal just to the right. Uh, thank you. Where are the prop pitch controls, number one? Just Never to mind. the left of the throttle. Thank you. That's all the time we have. It's time to vote once again. It came upon us too quickly tonight. There's been such interesting rounds all the way. So will you mark your ballots, please, right now, voting as you do without consultation for number one, number two, or number three. All set and ready to go. Thomas, whom did you select this time? I, I, I wanted to vote for number three, and my pencil came down and wrote one. I don't know whether that means anything, but I forced it to be number three anyway. <laughs> Just uh, because of the way he sounds and the way he looks. They all answered questions beautifully. Mimi. Well, I voted for number three. I have no reason particularly, excepting he said it was a water spout. Number one, I don't, um, I think Baltimore is the place where the Chief Weather Bureau forecasting or they get all the information. And number two, you knew so much. Yeah, didn't he know? <laughs> oh. Johnny. <laughs> I voted for number one. Tom has, has been in the Air Force, and I peeked over and cheated. <laughs> Yeah, one, two, two, wait, wait. Oh. Gee, I feel like a nut. I voted for number two because he knew so much. <laughs> All right, once again, we come to that moment. Let's see how it works out this time as we learn which one of these three gentlemen is the real tornado hunter. So will the real Jim Cook please stand up? Okay. It is great. Yes, it's great. Is there, any, is there any danger involved in that? It sounds terribly dangerous. Is it? Well, uh, only the fact that it spawned the twist as we know it today. There's a lot oh, of danger in that. Yeah. <laughs> He's the father of the twist? <laughs> Just about. Uh, let's see now. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is George Clovis. I own and operate High Point Inn at Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania. Ah. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do, please? Well, my name is Jess Ballou, and I'm Eastern Advertising Sales Manager for the Saturday Evening Post, the Reading Magazine. Oh, you're really stuff, didn't you? <laughs> well, gentlemen, if you had fun, you also take along to you not quite as much as the first two rounds did, but two incorrect. At two fifty each is a total of five hundred dollars. Not bad. Also, of course, from Dristan, you receive a gift package of all of their fine products. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. I would like to ask Tom one additional question, though. In our first round about the young lady who sailed all alone across the uh, Atlantic, you mentioned a Colin Fox. Colin Fox was a, a man who sailed a canoe single-handed from England to, to this country, Newfoundland or someplace. Maybe, maybe America. I mean, maybe the United States, but certainly from England uh, to America. Uh -huh. Alone. Wow. In a canoe. A, canoe. a sail uh, canoe, of course. Me. Yes, Mimi. Mr. Collier, Mr. Poston, how do you sail a canoe? I thought you paddled a canoe. No, it's a sail canoe. Big one. Big canoe. Bigger from here oh, to Georgia. Oh, a big thing. Okay. Well, there you are. Live and learn on this show. And paddle oh, no. for all the joy you brought oh. me personally and everyone else tonight. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night bud. Bud Collier saying good night for Dristan and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. <laughs> to Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by concentrated heat liquid, the liniment to relieve minor rheumatism, arthritis, or backache pain for hours.
This is Johnny Olson saying goodnight for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.